Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be upgrading the NVMe SSD and the all new ASUS ROG Ally. Now this is something I personally really need to do. These only come with a 512 gigabyte drive. And of course we can use a pretty beefy micro SD card, but I did want a little more storage on that SSD. So I'm going to be upgrading this to a one terabyte drive. I'm using an Inland TN436. Now remember the ROG Ally uses a 2230 NVMe SSD. It also supports PCIe 4.0, and that's exactly what we have here with this 436 drive. Now, I would have loved to go with the 2TB drive, but ever since the Steam Deck and these handhelds that use these 2230 SSDs have been released, the prices on the higher-end drives have definitely gone up. And I really didn't want to break the bank, so I went with this one, coming in at $106 over on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it in the description. And, you know, getting this installed and set back up on the Ally is pretty simple, but there are a few things that I would highly suggest using if you're going to do a fresh install, which that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. There's another way you could go about this, by picking up an NVMe enclosure. That way you could take that new drive and clone your internal drive over that USB-C port. You're going to have the same exact system installed, but personally, I like doing fresh installs, so that's the way I'm going to go about it. So in order to get this up and running properly, obviously, you'll need the Ally, a new SSD, a small Phillips head screwdriver to get the back panel off, and I would highly suggest using some type of USB Type-C to full-size USB adapter. This one here has three ports on it, plugged directly into the single USB-C port on the Ally. That way I can actually plug in a keyboard, mouse, and a USB drive with my Windows installer installed on it. That way I don't have to do any kind of fiddling around or anything like that. I've got plenty of ports and I can get this up and running in no time. Now before we even pull the back panel off, the first thing I would suggest is actually backing up the drivers that are on your Ally right now. There's several apps out there. I'm going to show you the method that I use. And personally, the only one that I needed to back up was Wi-Fi. I just wanted to make sure that I had that ready to go with the fresh install of Windows. Then I could get the My Asus or even Armory Crate to download everything else I need through their updaters. Now it's time to create our Windows 11 USB installer. And there's many ways of going about this, but I'd say the easiest way for most people out there would be download the Create Windows 11 Installation Media application directly from Microsoft's website. So you can download it here. Go ahead and open it up. And I've already plugged my USB drive into my PC. We're going to use this official Microsoft application to create a USB installer. Windows 11, English, Obviously, we're using a flash drive. Like I mentioned, mine's already plugged in. And as you can see from here, it's listed two drives. Make sure you're doing the USB drive. I've named this one 512 SD. That's an SD card I have installed, but my USB drive is right here. So we'll choose next. This application is gonna do everything for us. Might take a little while depending on your internet connection, but another way you could do this is actually download the ISO directly from the same site from Microsoft. And you can use an application like Rufus to create that USB installer, but for most people, this is going to be the easiest way to go. So we'll give this time to finish. Our USB flash drive is now ready, but before we do the install, we want to back up these drivers. And the reason I'm saying it right now is because the Windows installer doesn't include the Wi-Fi driver, and that's really all we'll need to get updated on the Ally. But in the future, this may change, and uh, there's two ways to go about this. Head over to the ASUS website, find the ROG Ally, Support, Drivers and Utility, and they will be listed here. It's still a bit early for this device, so the official drivers aren't posted on their website, but this is going to be your best bet. Just download everything you can from here. But if you are doing this early, or you just want to back up all of your drivers, there's a way around this. Personally, I've been using this application for years. It's known as Double Driver. So we'll just download it. There's a lot of different places online where you can get this. It's going to come zipped. So what we're going to do is just head into our downloads folder. We're going to extract it. Now we have double driver and I'm going to place this on my desktop because uh, we're actually going to transfer this whole thing over to our USB drive once we're finished. And again, we've got our USB drive, which is now going to be called ESD USB. From double driver, we're going to start up the application, back up, scan current system. It's going to scan for all of our drivers, and it really highlights the necessary ones. We can back all of these up, or you can pick and choose. I'm going to choose backup now, single file, self-extract, 
and I'm going to put this on my desktop. Could take a little bit, depending on how many drivers we have, but it's going to create a folder and a zip file for us. That way we can easily restore these with double driver on the newly installed system. Once the application has backed up our drivers, we've got this zip folder right here on the desktop. We're going to place it in that double driver folder, and then we're going to take this whole thing and put it on our USB drive. Just drag it right over here. That way we have it ready to go once we finish the Windows 11 install on the new drive. Okay, now that we've got our Windows install USB ready to go, it's time to pull the back panel off and swap out this SSD. We're going to turn this around. We've got six screws we need to get out. Smaller Phillips head screws, really simple to do. We'll pull all six of these out. And five of these screws are exactly the same size, so you really don't need to worry about the order they go back in. And the final screw has kind of a C-clip on it, so it's going to stay with the back panel. Now that we have all of the screws removed, we do need to give a little pressure to this back panel to kind of pry it off. I find starting around the triggers makes it really easy if you don't have a spudger of some type. If you see what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of putting a little bit of pressure and it's going to pop right off. Like I mentioned, that final screw, the bottom screw right in the middle, is going to stay with the back panel. It's got a little clip on it, so it's not going to go anywhere, and those other five screws are the same size. Now we can access the NVMe SSD. It's right here under this black flap, little 2230 drive, 512 gigs, and this one is PCIe 4.0 that comes installed, but uh, you know we definitely want a little more storage here because these newer AAA games are getting really big. We'll just remove that screw that secures the uh, SSD in here and put this someplace safe because the new SSD doesn't come with an extra screw. You may have one laying around, but uh, now we can just go ahead and pull this 2230 NVMe right out of here. Once we have that removed, we can install the new SSD. So we're just going to place it right back in that NVMe slot, use the same screw, make sure everything is in here nice and secure, and then we can go ahead and reassemble the unit. Now if you did end up cloning your drive, all you're going to need to do is go ahead and put this in. I'd put the back on it, boot it up, make sure everything's working. You should have your Windows install ready to go. But since, you know, I'm doing a fresh install and I really suggest doing a fresh install just to kind of alleviate any issues down the road, we're going to have to install Windows. And that's why we created the Windows 11 install USB drive and placed a few of our drivers and applications directly on that drive. So once we get it installed to this new SSD, we can go ahead and boot this unit up, get everything installed, and we'll be up and running. Now, personally, I don't put all of the screws back in until I'm sure that everything's installed correctly. I'm just going to secure it with this one. And now we can start the install process. I've got my USB Type-C hub plugged into the Ally. I've also got a mouse and keyboard here to make the install really easy. We'll take our Windows 11 USB drive that we just created, plug it in, and we'll boot the unit up. Since there's no media on that new drive, it's going to boot directly from that USB for us. It knows it can't boot from the SSD yet, so it's going to bring us right into the installer. But if for some reason it goes directly to the BIOS, there is a boot menu. Or if you need to get into the BIOS at any time, while the unit's booting up, you can press F2 on your keyboard. Once we get into the installer, we're going to choose Custom Install, and we're going to choose that SSD we just installed in the Ally. It's going to do its thing, and once it's finished, it'll automatically reboot into the Windows 11 Setup Manager. From here, just like setting up any new PC, if you want to sign in with your Microsoft account, you can. But we're just going to go through the process here and get us directly to the desktop. Now we've got a fresh install of Windows 11, but we are lacking drivers at the moment. In the future, the Wi-Fi driver that the Ally uses may be built into the Windows installer, but at the time of making this video, it isn't. That's why we backed it up. I'm going to plug this into my game capture so we can get a closer look here. So we've got Windows installed. Now we're going to reinstall those drivers. So I've got the USB drive right here. Remember, we have double driver. Personally, I do like transferring this over to the uh, new drive. We'll just put it on the desktop. Open up double driver. We're going to right click and run this as administrator. We're going to restore. Local backup. Compressed zip. It's going to be in this folder. This is the backup we created. We'll choose OK. 
It's going to install all of her drivers. Now we've got access to Wi-Fi. We can go ahead and connect. And I would highly suggest downloading Armory Crate. You can get it from ASUS's website. And install. Once you're finished here, you're good to go. We now have a larger drive in our ROG Ally so we can store more games and play all day long. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I had a few people asking about this. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's actually pretty easy to upgrade this drive. You can clone it if you want to. You can always use the drivers from ASUS's website, but I just kind of back them up. And I personally like doing a fresh install, so I figured I'd do a quick tutorial. If you've got any questions or if there's anything you want to see running on the Ally, let me know in the comments below. And I will leave links in the description to everything I used in this video. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.